Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashwin Tamankar. I am a consultant in Urological Oncology Division and Robotic Surgery Division of Apollo Hospitals, Navi Mumbai. Recently, we considered or celebrated World Kidney Health Day on 10th of March. So that is to create awareness amongst people for kidney health. Another important aspect of that is kidney cancers. So we are here today to create some awareness on the kidney cancer and obviously we will be discussing about treatment aspects of kidney cancers as well in the end. So understanding that kidney cancer is a very important cancer especially in the urological field it's, it's almost the second or third most common cancer after prostate cancer. Majority of the times in India unfortunately in, in, if you compare the global statistics with Indian statistics we are literally 10 years younger than, than the global statistics so probably we are literally a decade early. Average age of onset of kidney cancer in Indian patients is about 56 years against to about 64 across the globe. So we are nearly 8 to 10 years earlier. Nearly one third of the patients whom we treat for kidney cancers are less than 50 years. More than 60 percent, more than 60 percent of the patients with Kidney cancers in the western countries are detected in a small and early, small size and early stage. However, in India, it is the proportion is only 10%. So, the small size kidney masses are picked up only for 10% of the individuals who are diagnosed with kidney cancers in India. Male to female predisposition in Indian standards is about 4 as to 1. Probably that is because of the ignorance of the symptoms or possibly uh, uh, age old concept of not approaching the medical facilities from the uh, females uh, and ignoring the symptoms in the initial bridge. Let's understand what all are the risk factors. So, from the first incidence and prevalence section, an important highlighting point which I am going to drive across is we are younger on the age, age of onset for kidney cancer as compared to the Western countries, and most importantly. We should be, it is an important aspect for us to have early detections which will translate into better benefit for the treatment. Let's come to the risk factors. There are essentially three to four important risk factors for kidney cancer. Most important is smoking. So obviously smoking adds up in number of years and number of pack years uh, in total giving rise to significant risk. Second most important risk factor is obesity and third is long standing hypertension. Obviously, not only those individuals who have either of these risk factors will develop a cancer. The cancer can develop because, because of any possible other reason. There are certain genetic implications which are yet to mature, which are yet to be completely understood, honestly speaking. But cancer can happen for individuals even without risk factors. But obviously, those with risk factors, they should not ignore any possible symptoms out of these cancers. Another fourth important risk factor is chronic kidney disease. For those patients who have dialysis which is happening from the nephrology division, their native non-functional kidneys or even those who have already undergone a transplant, their native kidneys which were previously non-functional are predisposed for kidney cancers. So these are important th four, three or four risk factors which we spoke about. And coming to the symptoms, so essentially Initial stages, these particular cancers do not throw symptoms. The earliest symptom which can form is either pain in the flank or sometimes blood in the urine, which we call it hematuria. If you remember, we had previous entire session dedicatedly on hematuria, but just to give a brief line or a summary line out of it is even a single episode of blood in the urine should not be ignored. That should be reported to the doctor for further evaluation. So kidney cancer may manifest with either blood in urine or pain in the flank or a lump in the flank. In the very late spectra, it would manifest with features of spread, meaning bony pains or sometimes jaundice or blood in the cough when it has lung metastasis. So that's the end spectrum of the cancer or the last manifestations of the cancer in the last stage. Why it is important to have early detection? Like I said in the initial bit, in India, we get only 10% patients to the stage or to the size less than 4 cm at a time of diagnosis against to more than 60% of the patients in the western countries. Because in the initial small size, we can try and spare the kidney. We can only take the tumor out keeping a small margin of the native kidney with the tumor 
and sparing the rest of the kidney which is called as partial refractory. It is little difficult after the size increases beyond 4 to 7 centimeters. In the aggressive stages or higher stages, it is practically impossible and we have to go for complete removal of the kidney. Hence, it is very very essential to pick up these cancers early. Majority of these cancers in these days are detected on screening sonographies which are done as a part of health checkups. On the sonography, there will be some mass which will be detected on the kidney and then it is evaluated further by doing a CT scan to pick up a cancer. But majority of the times in Indian standards, we unfortunately do not reach out to the healthcare facilities well in time and that's why we land up a little late in the diagnostic spectrum of this particular cancer. And this stands true for not only kidney cancer, it stands true for majority of the cancers. So, Early stages, you can try and spare the kidney. We are going to talk about that exactly what partial nephrectomy means, what radical nephrectomy means in, in the next few lines. But important aspect is please do not ignore your symptoms. It is a it is a wise idea to have regular health checkups done on regular intervals for understanding that the entire because it majority involves a sonography, which tells you that majority organs in the tummy are all fine. Let's come to the treatment aspects. Like I said previously, in small size masses, a CT scan in generally uh, has a good evidence or even in large size masses, CT scan gives us a good evidence of uh, having a possibility of cancer by the virtue of the findings. In small, very small size masses, less than 2 to 3 cm size, the possibility of that particular uh, growth turning out to be non-cancerous does exist to the tune of about 10 to 15 percent or lesser. But as the size increases, there is a higher propensity of having a cancer detected into the uh, mass or the growth. So CT scan is an essential pillar of staging. After the CT scan, we image the chest by doing a CT scan of the thorax or the chest to rule out the spread. And then come to the conclusion of definitive treatment with an intention of cure for the patient. Biopsies generally are not done routinely for kidney cancers because it comes with some possible complications of bleeding, rarely some elements of missing out the actual growth and having a false negative results and a theoretical possibility of needle tract seeding. But biopsy has certain role in certain spectrum or certain limited group of patients of kidney cancers which have cancer which is already spread to different body parts or an individual who is not very much fit to undergo a procedure, then the biopsy is must to understand what is actually exactly happening in the kidney. Once we image the patient and come to the diagnosis, we have, we have either an option of sparing the kidney, that is called as partial nephrectomy, or have an option of complete removal of the kidney, that is called as a radical nephrectomy. Both these surgeries can be performed either with a conventional open manner, or a laparoscopic manner, or a robotic manner. So let's talk about partial nephrectomy in brief. Partial nephrectomy means you are trying to only scoop out the tumor with adequate margin of the healthy kidney tissue. So while performing this particular procedure, you are temporarily clamping the vessels of the kidney to minimize the blood loss, doing the job quickly as quickly as possible, and then reconstructing the rest of the kidney parenchyma to bridge the defect uh, for uh, normalcy. Once we do the partial nephrectomy, the pathologist obviously tells us about the reports and we generally follow those patients on regular intervals at about 3 to 6 months with the set of imaging. Whenever the tumor is large in size or not a very uh, good location amenable for partial nephrectomy, we do not unfortunately have an option but to go for a complete removal of the kidney that is called as radical nephrectomy. Again, radical nephrectomy can be done in an open conventional manner or laparoscopic manner or robotic surgery. Radical nephrectomy generally also involves lymph node dissection in the adjacent areas next to the major vessels and the entire specimen again goes to the pathologist and pathologist enlightens us about the findings. First of all, if they give us confirmation, they tell, about, tell, it, tell us about the type of the cancer and they also tell us about the risk factors in the specimen or the cancer cancerous growth. Depending upon that, we have to have the further follow-up done for the patient. First and important understanding here, it's a cancer surgery. So, a good and a diligent follow-up has to happen for very long term. What is the role of chemotherapy in kidney cancer? 
cancer. So majority of the patients who get detected in the late spectrum of the cancer, wherein there is already a spread of the cancer to different body parts, which has already happened, we tend to take a biopsy of the kidney, prove the diagnosis, and then start the patient on selective chemotherapy and immunotherapy drugs. In last four to five years, the role of immunotherapy has become very, very robust in kidney cancers and kidney and the bladder cancers are the two important cancers in the urological field wherein the role of immunotherapy has uh, come up in a big way. Immunotherapy gives excellent responses to these patients in addition to chemotherapy. There are various regimens about it and medical, a dedicated medical oncologist can look after that front. Let's talk about the robotic surgery for kidney cancer in brief before we conclude. So again, like I said, robotic surgery is an advanced form of minimal invasive surgery or I should say advanced form of laparoscopic surgery. It gives us an extra advantage in terms of three-dimensional vision with good magnification, nearly 20 times magnification. A, a, a rested movement with the robotic arms helps us to have faster reconstruction, a precise reconstruction allows us to minimize the blood loss and hence translating into faster and rapid recovery of the patient for early discharge without any complications. That outcome is called as trifecta, especially we call it trifecta for partial nephrectomy wherein we minimize the complications, minimize the blood loss, minimize positive margins and do the job as quickly as possible with the advantages of the robotic surgeries. So that trifecta outcome is doable and feasible because of the advent of the robotic surgeries for these particular patients. So, robotic surgery scores over conventional laparoscopic surgery or open surgery for tumors which are amenable for minimal invasive procedures. Obviously, not every, every tumor is amenable for these minimal invasive procedures, but robots certainly scores uh, over conventional procedures for partial removal of the kidney tumors whenever it is feasible. For radical nephrectomy, again laparoscopy or robot have distinct advantages over conventional open approach in terms of minimization of scars or minimization of big incisions, less of blood loss, less of pain in the post-operative phase, faster recovery and early discharge than a conventional open surgery in which the incision is quite biggish going through the lower rib cage leading to excess of pain in the post-operative phase. Obviously, most important aspect is it's a cancer operation. So first and foremost, the cancer outcomes has the cancer outcomes has to be uh, important for the patient's lifespan. Hence, whenever it is required, an open if the open surgery is deemed safe than the minimal invasive surgery in that particular individual, it should be the choice of the treatment. So every patient and every treatment has to be decided or tailored based on the findings and the for fitness for the patient. So there are two, three factors which are involved before taking a decision about the type of approach we need to decide about this particular procedures. So quickly summarizing few points out of this, kidney cancer is a growing cancer, the incidence is increasing. Please do not ignore blood in your urine. The risk factors are smoking, obesity, hypertension and previous chronic kidney disease or post transplant status of previous diagnosis dependent status. Early detection is the key wherein we detect the cancers earlier and treat that de patient definitively maintaining the remaining kidney intact for better quality of life, for better preservation of kidney functions in long term. A nephrologist role is very much pivotal in here in management of kidney cancers because majority of the patients are either going to be left with only one kidney or partial kidney on one side and the other kidney. Uh, which is going to be monitored for kidney functions or which are going to contribute for kidney functions in long run. Hence, a nephrologist has to be uh, in loop for the treatment of cancers and their job is excellent and, and, and extremely pivotal in these particular patients. So, that's it. I think World Kidney Day was on 10th of March and we did have, uh, we, we did have interaction from our nephrology colleague uh, uh, yesterday and this is in addition to what we can talk about the cancers of the kidney. So thank you so much.